All right, time to take a look at the RJ45 crimp toolkit. All right, that's cool. We got some zip ties. We've got our tester. We've got our strain reliefs. These are actually a rubber, so that's nice. We got our connectors. We've got a stripping tool. And we got our crimping tool. Okay. So this is a nice size, and I do like they got this kind of cut out to fit our fingers. And they got it marked with the color code. So we got our B and our A. Most of the time I do the B, which is orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. So that is labeled correctly. And this is kind of cool. So there is a locking pin right here. So if you want to just pack this thing up, just press that in. It'll hold it in place. And it does have a razor and it has a spot to strip or just to straight up cut. And if we look at the back, we can see this razor here. So that will cut off the excess wire. And that's a great thing because this is a lot easier to work with. So with the old style, you have to take those wires and you just stick them right to the end of the jack and then you crimp it down. So you have to have those wires cut perfectly before you even crimp it. With this one, you can just shove them all the way through and then cut off whatever's left over. So that is nice. So I'm gonna start out just by cutting this off to make sure that I've got a nice fresh cable. We can see it does make a nice clean cut. Then I'm going to take my stripping tool, drop that in there, give it a couple of twists. And there we go. I'll so start off by putting on our strain relief. I probably should have done that before I even stripped that, but that's okay. So we got it on there now. And we'll untwist our pairs. So we got orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. So something like that. Now to kind of straighten these out, I like to grab it, bend it, and pull it straight. And as you do that, make sure everything stays lined up. There we go. So it's looking pretty good. Now the reason I like stripping so much is because this at the end always tends to be a little bit extra wavy and right in the middle is where it's most straight. So I'm going to cut that. There we go. So that is going to be easier to feed. And then we're going to put our connector on. So the orange white is on the left side with the clip facing down so we can see the contacts on top. And as we're feeding that in, we can see that this is a pass-through cable. So we can just check these and make sure that they're all lined up correctly. Orange, white, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, brown, white, brown. So we are still good. And then we want the insulation to go underneath this pinch point right here. Just like that. Now I can feed that into our tool. We want to make sure that as we're putting this in, that these wires are not getting bound up. So if there was a wire jammed up in there, we wouldn't be able to get it all the way in. But this looks good, so I'm just going to crimp. There we go. And all these just kind of fall off. So we can see we are properly crimped here, so that's not going anywhere. Now I can put our strain relief on. So this side is done. Now we're just going to do the other side, and then we can test it. And I did put a strain relief on this one, not really a big deal. Still work. Uh, the main reason I didn't put it on is just because I forgot it. So that's one thing you want to make sure you don't do. Uh, if you really care about the strain release, make sure you put that on first. So now for the tester. So this is a tester and these are good for RJ45 as well as RJ11. So if you're doing phone lines, you can use it for that. We're going to connect from here to here. So that's RJ45 to 45. If you want to do RJ11, it'd be from here to here. Now what's cool about this, is you can slide it apart. So if you got to do a very long run, you can take this, take it to one end, plug it in. This doesn't require battery. This does require battery. So all this is going to do is essentially loop back that signal. So the battery for this is a 9 volt. It does not come with one, so you'll have to supply your own, but not a big deal. 
So I will plug one end in here, the other end in here. And then switch it on. Okay, so every one of these lights is lighting up, so that means that every connection is good. If one of these wasn't lighting up, then that means, well, for example, if two wasn't lighting up, that means that the number two wire, which would have been the orange, wasn't making a good connection. So the only thing you can do, cut that off, try it again. But this one is good. And we can switch it to S for a little bit faster. So overall, this is a pretty nice little kit.